All right, this next lecture is going to be about the respiratory system. So some brief anatomy of the respiratory system. We have an upper and lower respiratory tract. Everything from the nasal cavity the, and down to the pharynx, so including the oral cavity, all of that is considered the upper respiratory tract. Anything below that, larynx, where the voice uh, vocal cords are, that anything below that is going to be the lower respiratory tract. And so we can further divide the respiratory system into what we call the conducting portion and the respiratory portion. So the conducting portion runs all the way down to the level of things called terminal bronchioles. And it's called the conducting portion just because that's all it does is it conducts air. It moves air. It allows air to pass through. The respiratory portion is where we actually get gas exchange taking place. So that occurs mainly at these little air sacs called alveoli and also at these little tiny bronchioles or tubes called respiratory bronchioles. So just an overview of this in general, air gets into the body via either the nose or the mouth. It goes in the nose, it goes nasal cavity, and then the pharynx, mouth, if it comes in the mouth, oral cavity, then the pharynx. Then air is gonna pass through where your vocal cords are, which is called the larynx, then down your windpipe, which is called the trachea. The trachea branches into two branches, right around the level of the heart, and these are called primary bronchi. Those primary bronchi enter the lungs, and then as you can see, they branch. They keep branching like a tree, so this is called the bronchial tree. And what you end up with are these tiny little tubes called bronchioles, which terminate in these air sacs called alveoli. And we'll talk about that as we go through the rest of this lecture. So to quickly review the uh, anatomy of the respiratory system, we can start at the top. We have the nose, which has nostrils where air can get in, and it's supported, if you remember, by nasal bones. And then also within the nasal cavity, you have these olfactory receptors hanging down. It's lined with pseudostratified epithelium. The other thing that might be new here is right when you get into the nostrils, there's this little pocket called the vestibule. And uh, other things that you will remember, hopefully from the bone, there's a nasal septum in here. We have superior middle and inferior nasal concha, which help spin the air as it comes in to help filter it out. And the little air pockets are called meatuses. So the concha are the bones, the meatuses are the little pockets where the air would be. And then if you remember, there were these par uh, paranasal sinuses within the cranial bones that uh, helped with voice production and also help reduce the weight of the bones. So moving down to the pharynx, there's three parts. It's relatively simple. So the top part of the pharynx is called the nasopharynx. Beneath that, right behind the oral cavity, we have the oropharynx. And then we have the laryngopharynx. And so if you look at what they're lined with, the nasopharynx is lined with pseudostratified ciliated epithelium, whereas the oro and laryngopharynx are lined with both, the both stratified squamous epithelium. And reason being, food is going to pass through these two, and so you need that extra layer of protection here. But up here, food usually doesn't come this way, so you don't need that mul the multiple layers of protection. So moving on to the larynx, the larynx has a lot going on. Um, so you get three different views here. This is what it looks like in the front, this is the back, and this is the side. So the top upper part is uh, back to non-keratinized stratified squamous, and as you get lower in the larynx, it transitions back to pseudostratified ciliated epithelium. So we're going to talk about all these parts. So the cartilage, this big strip of cartilage right here is called thyroid cartilage, and it is hyaline cartilage. This big bump right here in the front is called the laryngeal prominence. You may know it as the Adam's apple. So laryngeal prominence is the Adam's apple. Beneath the thyroid cartilage, you get this ring called cricoid cartilage, and it looks different in the front. So in the front, it looks like a little tiny ring like this, but in the back, it gets really wide. But it is a ring that goes all the way around, and it's also hyaline cartilage. This big flap right here is called the epiglottis. It's made up of elastic cartilage, and it basically flips down when you swallow to prevent food from going into the larynx, because if that happened, you would start choking. And then we have the arytenoid cartilage, which are these two little things right here. 
and these attach to your vocal cords and you'll see that soon enough so these two little uh, kind of globular pieces of cartilage here and here and you can see them right here also so this shows your vocal cords and as you can see they run from the arytenoid cartilage up to the front of the thyroid cartilage and there's two pairs and so the the top ones are called uh, vestibular ligaments or sometimes known as false vocal cords if you look closely you can see them here on the top and then beneath that you have what are called vocal ligaments are true vocal cords and that's what actually gives us voice production and this is what it might look like if with all the soft tissue around it and we have muscles that basically move these vocal cords back and forth by moving that arytenoid cartilage and you can see you can open it up or make it more narrow and that actually changes your voice and that's how the vocal cords work those little ligaments move back and forth so just for the record the true vocal cords are responsible for voice production the false vocal cords don't do any voice production they're really there for protection All right, as we make our way down we have after the larynx we have the trachea so the trachea is this pipe that most people call it the windpipe and it's lined with pseudostratified ciliated epithelium you got lots of goblet cells in there uh, there's these rings on it kind of make it unique and these these are called tracheal cartilage they're c-shaped rings of cartilage and they basically uh, kind of strengthen the the trachea as it comes down but they don't they're not true circles they don't go all the way around so if you look at this cross section of it you can see that it's just like a C shape between the ligaments I'm sorry between the cartilage rings we have these little tiny ligaments called annular ligaments and that's their elastic so it kind of allows the trachea to expand and contract as needed and lastly we have a little muscle that runs that connects the two back ends of the trachea of the, the tracheal cartilage and that's called the tracheallus muscle and if that muscle contracts it's going to reduce the diameter of the trachea to lessen how much air comes in if it relaxes it's going to allow you to move more air through the trachea All right and at the end of the trachea it's going to divide into a primary a left and right primary bronchi bronchus so bronchus is singular bronchi is plural and those are what enter the lungs and this is just showing you again pseudostratified epithelium and then as we follow the primary bronchi into the lungs we see that they branch and they branch a lot and that's called the bronchial tree so primary bronchi enter the lungs they're going to branch into a secondary bronchi and then tertiary bronchi and then continue to branch even further but I want you to note right now that for each side, the left and right, has uh, one term, one primary bronchi. So there's two total, one on the left, one on the right. For secondary bronchi, the left lung has two, the right lung has three. So there's a difference there. And then for tertiary, it's eight to ten. So as they the more branches you get, the more you actually more the number actually increases. And they have smooth muscles, so they constrict and dilate. They have cartilage to stabilize it, and they're all lined with pseudostratified ciliated epithelium. All right, when we get to the level of the bronchioles, uh, they get really tiny, as I was alluding to earlier. And if we kind of look at the end, we're going to get these little air sacs called alveoli, and they're covered with pulmonary capillaries. And those pulmonary capillaries are where the gas exchange actually takes place in the pulmonary circulation. So kind of the end result here is you're going to get terminal bronchioles that lead to respiratory bronchioles that lead to alveolar ducts and then the alveoli. And the gas exchange mainly takes place on the alveoli, although it can take place also a little bit in the respiratory bronchioles and alveolar ducts. Notice the color change as the blood is moving through the pulmonary circulation, the blood is being reoxygenated as it's passing over the alveoli. And this is showing close-up of the alveoli. 
So the alveolar sacs are made up of simple squamous epithelium. And they're really thin because you want gas to diffuse there, oxygen and carbon dioxide moving. And so those are called type 1 cells, the cells that make up the alveoli. So they're just simple squamous epithelial cells. Then we have type 2 cells, which are cuboidal shaped cells, but they actually secrete something called surfactant. Surfactant is a substance that basically prevents the alveoli from collapsing by reducing the surface tension. So we need uh, those type 2 cells for the surfactant. And then lastly, we have some cells called dust cells, which are basically macrophages. And then if we look even closer at the respiratory membrane or the alveolar, we can see where gases are actually being exchanged. So what you're seeing here, we're going to call this the respiratory membrane. Here's a pulmonary capillary. Here's an alveolar sac. So you can see that we want oxygen to move from the alveoli into the blood, and we want carbon dioxide, which is a waste product of metabolism, to go from the blood back into to the alveoli so we can, we can ex exhale it. And so there's three total layers to this respiratory membrane. You got the endothelial layer, the simple squamous cell associated with the alveoli. You have the simple squamous cell of the capillary, which would be the endothelium. Then you have both of their fused basement membranes right here. So those three layers make up the respiratory membrane, the capillary endothelium, fused basement membranes, and the endothelium of the alveoli.